There's a device sitting on Elon Musk's desk at SpaceX right now that weighs just 2.6 pounds, fits easily in a backpack, and delivers one petaflop of AI processing performance. The same computational power that required entire rooms of specialized equipment just a few years ago. Jensen Huang personally hand-delivered it hours before Starship Flight 11, recreating a moment from nine years earlier when he drove across San Francisco to deliver OpenAI its first DGX-1, the machine that helped train the models that eventually became CHATGPT. But this time, the supercomputer doesn't require dedicated cooling infrastructure, specialized electrical systems, or data center rack space. It sits on a desktop like an ordinary workstation. This isn't just another incremental hardware improvement or a slightly faster graphics card for gaming enthusiasts. This represents a fundamental shift in where AI development happens and who can participate. For years, cutting-edge AI research has been confined to organizations with access to massive cloud computing budgets or private data centers containing thousands of interconnected processors. The cost barrier alone eliminated most researchers startups, and creative studios from pushing boundaries. But NVIDIA's DGX Spark, priced at $3,999 and available for orders starting October 15th, just collapsed that barrier entirely. What follows is an examination of why this specific piece of hardware matters more than its modest size suggests, how it changes the economics of AI development, and why early units are already showing up at Microsoft, Google, Meta, universities, robotics labs, and creative studios worldwide. This isn't about raw performance specifications, it's about what happens when supercomputing becomes personal and iteration cycles shrink from weeks to hours. The computing power that fits in a backpack. The NVIDIA DGX Spark is built around the Grace Blackwell GB10 Superchip, a processor architecture that unifies CPU and GPU computing in ways that eliminate traditional bottlenecks. It provides one petaflop of AI-specific performance, which means it can execute one quadrillion floating-point operations per second optimized specifically for machine learning workloads. To put that in perspective, that's computational power that would have required an entire data center just a decade ago, now contained in a 1.2 kilogram desktop device. But the real innovation isn't just miniaturization, it's the unified memory architecture. The system provides 128 gigabytes of memory that both the CPU and GPU can access directly without copying data back and forth through traditional interfaces. This is connected via NVLink C2C technology offering 5 times PCIe Gen 5 bandwidth, which means data moves between processing components at speeds that eliminate the traditional loading and unloading delays that plague standard computing architectures. Why does unified memory matter so profoundly? In traditional AI development workflows, moving data between different types of memory creates constant bottlenecks. You load a model into GPU memory, process some data, move results back to system RAM, then load the next batch. Each transfer consumes time and energy. With unified memory, everything exists in a single shared space. Larger models run without complex sharding strategies. Multimodal agents that combine vision, text, and audio process seamlessly. Retrieval systems and tool use pipelines operate faster because data doesn't cross architectural boundaries repeatedly. The practical workload capabilities are equally impressive. Fine-tuning models up to 70 billion parameters and running inference on models up to 200 billion parameters. That covers most current state-of-the-art language models, vision systems, and multimodal architectures. The full NVIDIA AI software stack comes integrated, CUDA programming frameworks, optimized libraries, and NIM microservices that enable complex AI workflows to run locally without cloud dependencies. The economics that changed overnight Let's talk about what this does to AI development economics, because the implications are staggering. Cloud computing for AI training and inference has become extraordinarily expensive. Researchers routinely spend thousands of dollars just experimenting with different model architectures or hyperparameter configurations. Startups burn through venture capital funding paying for GPU hours. Even large organizations carefully ration cloud resources because costs scale brutally with experimentation. DGX Spark fundamentally inverts that equation. At $3,999 for a complete system, it's a capital expense that eliminates recurring cloud costs for a huge range of AI workflows. Prototype locally, fine-tune locally, run inference locally, only scale to cloud infrastructure when you've validated an approach and know exactly what resources you need. 
no egress fees for data movement, no queuing for available GPU resources, no surprise bills from experimental runs that consumed more compute than anticipated. For startups, this represents a dramatic reduction in burn rate and a way to ship products faster while maintaining complete control over intellectual property. Everything stays on device until you deliberately choose to deploy it elsewhere. For researchers, this enables IRB-friendly experiments with sensitive data that never leaves the local environment, plus perfect reproducibility without worrying about cloud infrastructure changes affecting results. For enterprises, this means private fine-tuning of models on proprietary data, on-premises inference for compliance-sensitive applications, and clean audit trails showing exactly where data traveled. The analogy that captures this shift Data centers were railroads, massive infrastructure, requiring enormous capital investment to access. DGX Spark is the motorcycle. You don't need to move along established tracks. You weave through existing infrastructure on your own path, the distribution model that changes everything. Early DGX Spark units are already deployed at a fascinating cross-section of organizations that reveals exactly who understands the strategic implications first. Microsoft. Google, and Meta obviously secured early access. They're hedging against cloud dependency, even as they operate massive cloud platforms themselves. But more interestingly, units went to Hugging Face, Olama, and Palo Alto Networks, organizations building the infrastructure and tools for decentralized AI deployment. Universities received early units too. NYU's Global Frontier Lab and Arizona State's Robotics Program. Professor Kyung Hyun Cho at NYU called it Periscale computing on our desktop, a new way to do AI research even for privacy-sensitive applications. That last phrase is critical. Privacy-sensitive applications that couldn't be explored via cloud services can now be researched locally with serious computational power. Creative studios like Anadol Studio and Refik got units for multimedia and video generation work that previously required either massive cloud spending or accepting severe limitations. Robotics labs can now run simulation-to-reality loops in a single box, rather than maintaining connections between local robots and remote compute infrastructure. The builder community is already calling this a lab in a box. Everything needed for serious AI research and development contained in a single desktop device. That's not marketing hyperbole. That's practitioners recognizing that the friction points that previously slowed iteration cycles just disappeared. Orders open October 15th through NVIDIA.com and major OEM partners, including Acer, Asus, Dell, HP, Lenovo, and MSI. This isn't limited availability vaporware, this is mass market distribution through established channels, which means thousands of these systems will be deployed within months. The workflow transformation? Here's what actually changes in practice when teams have this capability locally. Agent-based AI systems can run entirely on device using NIM microservices and tool chains like Cosmos. Retrieval augmented generation systems accessing private document corpuses operate without any data leaving the physical room. Vision search combined with video summarization runs on premises. Real-time robotics and autonomy workflows process at the edge rather than depending on network connections to remote servers. If ChatGPT and similar systems represent the cloud operating system for AI, DGX Spark is the field kit that shows up where actual work happens. The cloud becomes the publishing step rather than the drafting step. You iterate locally with zero latency, validate quickly with complete privacy, and only scale to cloud infrastructure for deployment of proven approaches. This fundamentally changes the playbook. Previously, every experiment required cloud access, which meant every iteration had financial and time costs. Now, iteration is essentially free locally. You can try dozens of approaches, fail fast, learn from failures, and only commit to expensive cloud resources once you've identified what actually works. The cost reductions cascade across multiple dimensions, reduce spending on exploratory prompting and evaluation, eliminated data movement between services, simpler compliance because sensitive data never leaves controlled environments, no idle GPU costs from over-provisioned cloud resources, and eliminated queuing delays waiting for available compute. A single $3,999 unit won't replace an entire supercomputing cluster, but it collapses time and expense during the most critical phase of AI development, the messy, experimental iteration where breakthroughs actually happen. The historical pattern that keeps repeating. We've witnessed this exact pattern multiple times across computing history. Mainframe computers were replaced by mini-computers that brought computing closer to users. 
many computers were replaced by personal computers that put computing directly in individuals' hands. On-premises servers were replaced by cloud infrastructure that eliminated hardware management overhead. And now, cloud-only AI is being challenged by hybrid approaches that bring computation back to local environments. Every single time computing power moved closer to the people actually creating things, the next wave of breakthrough products appeared faster than anyone anticipated. Desktop publishing became possible when sufficient computing power reached individual designers. Digital music production exploded when adequate processing reached individual musicians. Video editing democratized when capable hardware became personally affordable. AI development is following the identical trajectory. For years, only organizations with substantial cloud budgets could seriously participate in pushing boundaries. That constraint is ending. When thousands of researchers, developers, and creative professionals have desktop access to supercomputing power, the rate of innovation will accelerate in ways that are difficult to predict but easy to anticipate structurally. So here's what actually happened in Texas. Jensen Huang personally delivered to Elon Musk a 1.2 kilogram device, providing one petaflop of AI processing performance, unified memory architecture that eliminates traditional bottlenecks, and complete software infrastructure for running state-of-the-art AI workflows locally. This recreated a moment from 2016 when he delivered OpenAI's first DGX1, the machine that helped train models that became C-H-A-T-G-P-T. But this time, the supercomputer fits in a backpack and costs $3,999. Early units are already deployed at Microsoft, Google, Meta, Universities, Robotics Labs, and Creative Studios worldwide. Orders open October 15th through major manufacturers. This represents a fundamental shift in AI development economics, eliminating cloud dependency for massive portions of the iteration cycle and collapsing the distance between idea and validation. The implications extend far beyond hardware specifications. When supercomputing becomes personal and affordable, when iteration happens locally without latency or recurring costs, when privacy-sensitive applications can be researched on desktop devices, the pace of innovation accelerates dramatically. History shows this pattern repeatedly. Every time computing power moved closer to creators, breakthrough applications appeared faster than experts predicted. By 2030, just five years from now, many of these technologies will transition from early adopter novelties purchased by enthusiasts to mainstream consumer products that fundamentally reshape how ordinary people live their daily lives. The future isn't approaching gradually anymore. It's arriving in compressed, overlapping waves, with each breakthrough enabling the next in accelerating succession. The question isn't whether these technologies will transform society. The question is whether social institutions, regulatory frameworks, and human psychology can adapt quickly enough to the transformations these technologies enable. Because ready or not, 2030 is going to look dramatically different than 2025, and 2025 already resembles science fiction compared to just a few years ago.